surge of interest in vinyl records is certainly benefiting local record stores throughout the city. Vinyl sales nationwide topped 2.5 million in 2009, a 33% increase from 2008. It was Will that finally spit it out. Sophie had had an accident. I didn't look behind me because I wasn't used to people. I didn't think she was there. And when I backed up, I just felt this bump and then I heard scream. What I do for a living is I'm a woodwind doubler, meaning I play a lot of different woodwind instruments. should know about looking different. When I was born, I was just like you. I had 10 fingers, 10 toes, two arms, and two legs. When I was three, I lost my leg in an accident. Now instead of two legs, I have just one. The day of the accident was the day before our oldest son, Philip, graduated from eighth grade. It was a weekday. It looked just about the way it does right now, the grass is green. I've always felt that maybe the accident would have, have not have happened if I had been at home or, uh, or I had taken Sophie with me. Philip and I had to go get a suit jacket for his graduation. And I was going up to visit my mom. And um, so I figured I'd mow this piece over here. I came around here. And then I saw Sophie coming up the hill with a little red wheelbarrow that she had. And by the next time I came around, she started following me with her wheelbarrow, thinking that was fun. She was just curious about what, you know, she just wanted to be there, I guess. When Phil and I drove up the dirt road, I noticed all these cars in the driveway. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. And so you try to make sense of it. And, and I guess I thought, my first thought was that it was a surprise party, but we're not that close to our neighbor. I, I like barked at her the way you do with a parent. Had a kid, <clears throat> had to scare her away. Don't follow me with that wheelbarrow. And I thought by telling her don't follow me with a wheelbarrow, I meant don't follow me. And I guess that's kind of like the problem was that she took it as don't follow me with the wheelbarrow. We pulled up the driveway and the kids all came running out, yelling something about Sophie, something about Sophie. And then I come around here, and when you mow around here, you have to turn the corner. But because you have to mow along there, you can't really turn the corner that sharp. You have to make a swinging turn. And I do, this, I do, I do it the same every time. I still do it. The same right now, even though it happened, I still do it. And every every week when I mow, I do the same thing, and every time I say, whoa, <laughs> that's where it was. And I believe it was Will that finally spit it out. Sophie had had an accident. I didn't look behind me, because I wasn't used to people. I didn't think she was there. And when I backed up, I just felt this bump, and then I heard scream. She went away in a helicopter, and I was trying to make sense of why Sophie was gone in a helicopter, why she had gone by herself. She was like right in here. And her leg was, her right leg was trapped under the mower. Didn't get anything that, that she was okay, but that she was hurt. Will came into my bedroom and said, Mommy, her foot was hanging by skin. Then they called from the hospital down there. And they said they were gonna have Go. Two things happened at that point. I started praying, I guess, you know, let this be okay. But another thing that was really, really powerful was that 
in I heard not audibly but I heard in my head a voice and it said this is out of your hands at first we called my new leg my doll leg we called it this because dolls are not scary and messy legs are now we call it my prosthetic leg because that is what it is I still kind of call it my doll leg because people like if people ask me about it I mean because prosthetic leg is it's an ugly word prosthetic well, not that nice a word and people like and then you have to figure out how to spell it and that kind of stuff and it doll leg just it, it's nicer yeah and it's easier to remember and that kind of stuff I have a different kind of leg now too, but we don't know about that. Okay, I don't know what happened to this one. Let's stick that in there now. See, see this one you can see out of, out of all of them that I had nail polish. I used to paint them with nail polish. That was interesting. And then the foots are kind of different sometimes. See, like this. This is what a regular foot looks like. This is the nicest one. Like, like see, if you have this one, this one has veins on it, which you can't see very well, but you can see the top wrinkles. What you should know about having a prosthetic leg: I can do anything, and everything that you can do. I can walk, I can run, I can jump, hop, skip, climb, hike, and dance. I can balance on one leg better than anyone I know, but I cannot point my toes. Where do you want me to park it? I hate to say this, but I kind of like being towards the center of attention, not the center of attention, but uh, I'm attention seeking. Five. <laughs> and when did you apply? Eight. Eight. Uh, you're 28? Yes. Right. Well, you're a little short, don't you? Sarah, careful. A little short, don't you think? spring musical, I'm in forensic speech and debate team. I guess I like it because I mean, I love singing and I like acting and so it's just kind of like a mixture of the both. Plus, a lot of the songs in most shows are quite catchy and it's an activity I can do. It doesn't depend on the weather like sports. And um, the other thing about performing is that you're not always yourself so you can be someone else and be something else. But you should also know, having a prosthetic leg is not fun. Sometimes I get sores from wearing it, and sometimes it comes off when it should not. But mostly it stays on, even when I play soccer. I can wear it in the pool, but I don't wear it in the bathtub, which means I need to be careful not to slip and fall. I guess I don't spend that much time on it, unless I, ha I get some kind of sore on it. And I know the last time I got one, I, uh, mom and pop forced me to not wear my leg for about two or three days. My bed routine, um, I go into the bathroom, I um, take the, li the inner liner and I turn it inside out. I turn the water on, um, three quarters hot, a quarter cold, more or less. Um, and then I uh, pull the, put the cork thing in so that the water stays in the thing, in the sink. And I, like, plunge it in there and get it completely covered in water. So I was playing Thorn Day, and I'm, I, I have a very uh, systematic process to this whole thing. And in a second, after I finish washing it, when I go to put it on the stand, I always go to kneel on the, on the toilet. And the one time, the toilet seat is open, right in. Cold and I don't remember if my head flushed or not. 
The worst thing about having a prosthetic is how other people treat you. People stare at you when you are different. Sometimes they stare for a really long time, and that makes me feel sad. Sometimes children are afraid and will not play with me. One time, some children threw wood chips at me and called me pig leg. I felt like shouting, hey, I am not my leg. So I was walking to English and I realized my shoe was untied. I was like, just get there, get to English class and don't trip, don't trip. I get to English class and uh, my friend's sitting there and I'm like, oh, you want to tie my shoe? And I meant it as a joke. She's like, oh, sure, okay, I guess. And then this kid who sits in front of me, Cody Piggy, he's like, no, don't let her tie your shoe. I want to tie your shoe. So he tied my shoe. And he then he started like, like hitting the leg and seeing if I could feel it. But most people, that's the, always the thing they want to know. Can I feel it? Which, I'm just going to say this. If I go and poke you on the leg, can you feel it? Depends on how hard you poke me. But most of the time, I can feel almost all the stuff anyone does to me. And no one thinks about that. Part of helping Sophie recover was helping her deal with people who stared and deal with her own insecurities about her leg. Part of that process was talking to her about it a lot and encouraging her to um, talk to others who were staring at her. So we were up in Ithaca and we were hiking the Toghannock Falls and there was another family with a little girl. And the little girl was, you know, looking at Sophie's leg. And Sophie sat down on the bank at the other side of the, of the creek. And the little girl walks right up to her maybe three feet from her and just stares right at her leg. And Sophie's kind of mm -hmm. And the parents of this little girl were trying to get her attention and trying to get her to stop staring. And in doing so, were making more of the scene um, that was taking place. And Sophie's just taking it all and looking past the little girl, looking around the little girl. Finally, the parents get the little girl's attention and she walks over to them and Sophie comes back to us and I said to Sophie, I said, Sophie, why didn't you say, uh, introduce yourself and say, hi, I'm Sophie. And she looks at me and she says, mom, she wasn't interested in me. She was looking at my leg and I'm not my leg. How can I look at Bro. Papa? I want to look Who's Papa, the one that's driving? She's in an age where she's more and more, you know, herself, you know, growing up, thinking about being a girl and everything else. And she certainly, she deals really well with not being able to do everything, you know, it's just, that's what she is. The most important thing you should know about having a prosthetic leg is that having a prosthetic leg is hardest when you look at me and think that my prosthetic leg makes me different from you. I'm not my leg. I'm not my eyes, my face, or any part of my body. Who I am is the person I am on the inside. I know that when you stare, you are staring because you're afraid or curious. You stare where my leg used to be, where I, too, wish it were. But I am not my leg. I'm more like you than you can see. I laugh the same as you laugh, and I cry the same, too. I wish you could see me with your stares and not just my missing leg. I am not my leg, you are not your eyes. We are not our crutches, our wheelchairs, our clothes, our money, or any of the things that we have. Who we are on the inside is the most important part of us. And what is important, whether you have a prosthetic leg or not, is kindness.